Okay. Thank you very much. So I'm really sorry. So these are the things I have already mentioned twice now. I'm just showing you one more time. And here you have the title and my name and address. The agenda I've just mentioned. Uh, the definitions of CLIU. Uh, I mentioned that this first one was taken from the TKT course, CLIU module 2010. It's an approach or method which integrates the teaching of content from the curriculum with the teaching of a non-native language. Then this one, Clear in Context, Practical Guidance for Educators 2016, says that many of the approaches focus on teaching language along with authentic content and in particular academic content such as methods. Mathematics. These programs are commonly referred to as CLIO or Content and Language Integrated Learning. The third definition comes from Excellence in Bilingual Education, a Guide for School Principals, 2012. CLIO is a dual focused teaching and learning approach in which an additional language or two is used in content classes for promoting both content mastery and language acquisition to predefined levels. The definition of bilingual education was also taken from Excellence in Bilingual Education, which says that bilingual education supports individuals in becoming and remaining bilingual. At least two languages are used to teach different content subjects such as mathematics or history, throughout the final, if not all the years of school life. And I also mentioned, although you, were, you couldn't see the slide, that the, uh, the link that we want to do between CLIO and bilingual education is that CLIO is an increasingly popular approach to bilingual education. This is the focus of our webinar. I also mentioned, although you couldn't see the slide, I'm sorry about this, that CLIO is not simply teaching a foreign, in a foreign language, and it's not abandoning our own teaching practice. Let's look at the four C's of CLIO that involve content, communication, cognition, and culture. By content, we talk about the curricular subjects taught in CLIO which include art, citizenship, classics, design and technology, economics, environmental studies, geography, history, information and communication technology, ICT, literacy, maths, music, music, physical education, philosophy, politics, religious studies, science, social science, and technology. Communication involves learners have to produce subject language. By subject language, we're talking about the subjects that we teach in two languages, in first language and in English in our case. So if we choose, for example, uh, economics for CLIO lessons, we want learners to produce subject language, in, in other words, economics, uh, in both oral and written forms. We therefore need to encourage learners to participate in meaningful interaction in the classroom. CLIO aims to increase student talking time and reduce teacher talking time. Cognition involves cognitive or thinking skills. CLIO promote cognitive or thinking skills which challenge learners. We need to develop, develop learners' cognitive skills so they can study subjects from the curriculum. These skills include reasoning, creative thinking, and evaluating. The role of culture, understanding ourselves and other cultures, is an important part of CLIO. We can make links with schools, this is just an example, from other parts of the world by making use of the internet to communicate with learners across the world about, for example, local environmental projects. It is important that our students get in contact with other learners using English as 
uh, the language that will involve them, not only in using the language, but understanding our learners' culture and other cultures as well. The aims are different. We are English language teachers that are invited to start working with clue lessons. When we're teaching just English, we, we, what we want, our aim is that our students become proficient in L2, in English, in second language. But when we're teaching CLIO, we want learners to develop competency in the four C's that we've just mentioned, content, cognition, communication, and culture. In all CLIO contexts, we need to analyze content for its language demands and to present content in an, in an understandable way. So the context plays an important role when we make decisions about what subject, the amount of subject, etc., etc., to be taught in English. That's why, in general terms, we can think of two basic one involving language-led type of clue, and another one involving subject-led type of clue. Let's look at the first context. Let's look at the column of context, context, first row. Some curricular topics are taught during a language course. What does that mean? This is a type of clue in which topics from the curriculum are presented within a language unit of a course book. And the language used for the CLIO topic is graded according to the language syllabus. That's why it's called language-led CLIO. This type involves just a few minutes of CLIO lessons a week or every other week. When we say here time, 45 minutes once a week, it's an example. It's not a rule. When we look at the other extreme, hard CLIO, let's read the context. About half of the curriculum is taught in the target language. The content can reflect what is taught in Portuguese in L1 curriculum, or it can be new content. And we're talking about, in terms of time, about 50% of the curriculum. So let's think of a primary school where I want to have hard clue for science. It means that Half of the curriculum of science in primary school will be done in English. But the, a decision must be made. Uh, will that content be uh, new to students, new content, or they will see the same content that they saw in Portuguese and in English so that they learn it in English as well? That's a decision to make. Midway between soft and hard clue, you find subject clear with less amount of hours. So in that case, the context is the following. Schools or teachers choose parts of the subject syllabus which they teach in the target language. Whenever we think of clear lessons, we must think of a balance between language and content. This is fundamental. In bilingual education, two concepts are, all, are important because bilingual education involves BICS and CALP. BICS stands for Basic Interpersonal Communication Skills, conversational language we use in day-to-day -day social interactions. So when we think of our English classes, we say, well, we teach BICs all the time. That's true. We do teach conversational language uh, that we use in day-to-day -day social interactions. And it's true in a bilingual school. We want students to be bilingual, learn bilingual speakers, to interact with the language socially. But in a bilingual program, another concept must be taken into consideration, which is CALP, Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, higher level language skills needed 
to succeed academically. We can introduce this language through CLIU. So for BICS, we teach uh, English, we teach the language normally. Whereas for academic language proficiency, we need to use CLIU methodology or approach. Some classroom principles. Language used to learn as well as to communicate in CLIU lessons. It is the subject matter which determines the language needed to learn. So if I have a lesson, you will watch in a minute a lesson, a science lesson with, in, with a, a primary uh, group of learners uh, where the teacher is teaching electricity and the children will need to know vocabulary related to the to topic of the lesson. So the subject matter, the third language, they will need to use. Subject is taught, sorry, subject is taught in simple, easily comprehensible ways, using diagrams, illustration, graphs, highlighted terms. We want them to know the content. We want them to know the, the subject. But we have to be careful with the language at the same time. Remember the balance, right? Between language and content. So we teach the subject in simple, easily comprehensible ways, always adapting to the level of English of learners. Language, subject-based vocabulary, texts and discussions, and if needed, Portuguese can be used. Two very important skills are developed in CLIU lessons. Learning skills and thinking or cognitive skills. Learning skills, they are skills which involve learning how to learn and developing learner autonomy. You will see that we, when we teach just the language, not a subject, not content, but language, we teach learners, we help learners develop learning skills all the time. So we are, we are very much familiar with learning skills. But thinking skills or cognitive skills, uh, they are processes our brains use when we think and learn. Some of them we use in English language lessons as well. But not all of them. It depends on the subject. It depends on the topic. Different cognitive skills will come into practice. Examples of learning skills that we are all very much familiar with. Take notes from auto, an auto presentation. Take notes when reading a text. Making diagrams to represent information. Search for information on the web. Form an idea about written text by skimming and focusing on titles and headings, ask questions, create an individual dictionary, form visual links to new words so as to remember them more easily, read maps, charts, graphs, and diagrams, use a table of contents and an index, work with a partner, work in groups. So these skills, we help our students in our English lessons develop all the time. What about thinking skills or cognitive skills? As we mentioned before, they are the processes, right? Our minds use when they are, when, when you are thinking, when you are, uh, when you need to do something consciously with your mind. So uh, the cognitive skills are divided into two major groups, lower order thinking skills that we call lots, and higher order thinking skills that we call HOTS. Lower order thinking skills are skills such as remembering, understanding, applying. Examples of HOTS would be analyzing, evaluating, and creating. But what is important here is to observe that for each of these uh, skills, we have verbs related to them. Let's see, for example, remembering. Remembering uh, means find or remember information. What are the verbs? What are the actions related to remembering? List, find, name, identify, locate, describe, memorize, define. Another example. Let's see an example from a HOTS. Evaluating. Critically examine info, information and make judgments. 
The verbs related to evaluating are judge, test, critique, defend, criticize. So what, what is the major difference between them? When lower order thinking skills are being used, the learner is usually unaware of it. We use, we use them automatically. Let me give you an example. You're teaching two primary kids parts of the body. So you want them to know how to say the word hand in English. You show them a hand and you ask them to repeat after you hand. But they are not learning just the word hand. They will probably learn like 10 different words to name different parts of the body. We need to help them remember. So we play games with them. They sing songs. They say chants. And by doing that, they are naming, they are using their memory, they are memorizing, but they, they do it just automatically. It's not complicated. We do it, do, do it all the time. When higher order thinking skills are being used, then the learner is aware that they are thinking. This is because it takes a greater cognitive effort to perform higher order thinking skills. It is more complex. So if I want to give, let's say, a, uni a university student an activity in that involves creating, design, build, construct, plan, produce, devise, invent, they, have, they know that they are thinking. They have to stop and think about it. This is more complex than just remembering, for example. Now, I'd like you to watch a lesson, a clue lesson. Uh, this link in YouTube gives us six lessons uh, from different countries in Europe. Three of them are in primary schools, are primary school lessons. And three of them are in vocational colleges. So uh, we have three lessons with kids, with young learners, and three lessons with young adult, adult learners. I've chosen one to show you, and we will look through the activities of this lesson and analyze the activities from the point of view of thinking skills and cognitive skills. We are going to talk about electricity. electricity. This video, please. Where does electricity come from, RT? Electricity comes from a power plant. Electricity is a form of energy. Okay. Okay. Now it's time to check the vocabulary. Do you know the game memory? So, have you got a microwave oven? Yes, I have. What do we use electricity for? Washing machine, grill, radio, toaster, fridge, stove, location, power and motion, light, and heating and cooling. How much does this consume? One thousand three hundred watts. One hundred and fifty. I think twenty-five. How much electricity do we consume at home? This is. We have to calculate the daily consumption and the monthly consumption. And sometimes we waste a lot of uh, electricity. This is a good game. Don't switch off the light when you leave a room. Change all of this 
with this. What do you think? Okay, watched the lesson, and now let's look at let's look at the activities. I'm just checking if the slides are okay. Let me see what's going on. Just a second. Okay. Right. Now, going back to my presentation. But that okay. Okay. Okay, so first activity, the teacher introduces the topic, topic with video. Look, the topic for this primary lesson, as you saw, certainly, is electricity and energy saving. Well, how does she introduce the topic? She gives the students a fun video, a video for young learners. And by uh, watching the video, students get... The introductory, the introductory information about the topic. So, in terms of learning skills, they were interpreting information from the video. And in terms of thinking skills, they were remembering the information that they saw on the video. Then she moves on to a second activity, to a memory game with picture cards and word cards. Word cards. Uh, if she's using a playing a memory games with learners, it means that she has already taught uh, the vocabulary that they need to play the game. So we have to infer that, that that was already taught. And during the activity, they need to ask each other questions. Have you got a DVD player? Yes, I have. And if the other uh, classmate has a DVD player, they have a match. Okay, why does she call it a memory game? Because if I only have the picture, I have to remember how this device is called in English. In terms of learning skills, she's working with, they are learning, they are practicing to work with a partner and ask and answer questions. These are the learning skills involved in the activity of the memory game. In terms of thinking skills or cognitive skills, they are using uh, the skill of remembering. They are naming objects. Then she moves on to a third activity. She puts a mind map on the board. A mind map is a visual organizer. It helps learners to connect knowledge and ideas presented previously, to understand and recall information, to select, transfer, and categorize information, to produce oral and written language, to think creatively. Here is the mind map, the main topic, electricity, and for that main topic, she uh, chose four categories. And students will bring names of uh, devices, of electric devices that we use in our homes, and they match those electric devices depending on the category, like air conditioner, to heating or cooling, right? So, learning skills. Form visual links to new words so as to remember them more easily. 
uh, teaching students uh, to, to make visual links is quite interesting because when we organize vocabulary visually and in semantic fields, we memorize the words better, right? So this is an interesting activity. Another learning skill is complete a mind map of vocabulary. Thinking skills or cognitive skills, they are using remembering, applying, using information uh, in a new but similar situation, and analyzing, because they are categorizing. So if you think of hots and lots, lots lower order thinking skills, they use remembering and applying. And in terms of lot of hots, higher order thinking skills, they are already using analyzing, categorizing. The fourth activity involves the use of realia. Realia are real objects used to help students in a class. The teacher gives the students electric devices and asks them to look for the label listing how many watts each device uses. So they have a label uh, in each of, that, of the devices they have in their hands, there is a label, and the label will find the information of uh, how many watts each, one, each device uses. Uh, we have uh, two models of labels here on the screen, at the bottom of your screen, and they are different devices. The first one uses uh, from a, about 800 to 2,000 watts and the other device from 1100 to 1200 watts. So these are walls, uh, examples of, of devices with different uh, number of, of, of different wattage that they use uh, when, when um, you use them, different type of consumption. While they are reading the labels, they, are, they learn that the more device uses watts, the higher the consumption of energy is. This is one of the crucial uh, or important pieces of information that the teacher wants to pass on to learners in this lesson. Uh, in terms of learning skills, they are reading figures and thinking skills. They are understanding, making sense out of information, and also analyzing. Uh, because they are comparing information. By comparison, they realize uh, that one device uses more or less what? what. Then the fifth information, they are asked uh, to look for information and calculate energy consumption and costs. So, now learners are aware that depending on the device, the consumption of energy can be higher or lower. So they already understand that. So they are asked to fill in a chart with information taken from a web and to, to figure out the daily and monthly consumption of energy. Based on the wattage of each device and the number of hours they use it on a day or on a month, they will come to conclusion of how to save energy. So learning skills, searching for information on the web, note-taking, organizing information, and working groups because they did this activity in groups. Thinking skills, applying, stating, solving problems, and calculating. So it is, although it is lots, it is a lower order thinking skills, they do a lot here. It's, it's applying information with a lot of things involving applying, estimating, solving problems, calculating. The last activity is a game. She calls it energy saving activity or an energy saving game. Uh, what does the teacher do? She gives learners different options, uh, either of devices or of situations and they need to decide if that device or that situation is a saver or a waster of energy. So the learning skills here, they are taking part in a game, following game rules. And in terms of thinking skills, they are one more time analyzing, but this time examining, comparing. 
So just to remind you the difference between logs and hogs, and you, uh, students in the in this in the six activities of this lesson, they did they used the cognitive skills of remembering, applying, and analyzing. Some benefits of Clue. It accelerates learning, is authentic, nurtures a few good fun and can do attitude, fires the brain up, fires the neurons, rejuvenates teaching, serves as a platform for ultimate students' interest in other languages and cultures, gives feelings of professional satisfaction and cooperation to teachers. Parents are usually for it, not against it, but usually for it. So let's imagine students having more fun in the lessons, using their brains, learning something in English, not just the language, but another subject in English, teachers cooperating with one another. So I'm an English teacher, I need the science teacher uh, help in this lesson, or the science teacher is is providing a, a, a lesson in English and asks me for cooperation, for ideas of activities. So this cooperation is positive for teachers, gives a good feeling of professional satisfaction. And all of this is beneficial for the school. Some discouraging factors or limitations. Clue is complex in the sense that I'm not only teaching language, as we have mentioned several times, but I'm teaching subject content. So it's not that simple, it involves a lot. There is no single model for Clue. The context is to be taken into account. Who is to teach Clue? Language teachers or subject teachers, or how can we combine both? In, primary, in the primary segment, language teachers, in our case, English teachers, in general, can cope with the, the, the subject content of science, sometimes maths. But when you move on to secondary and then uh, upper levels of the, 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 the educational segment, it is uh, English language teachers cannot deal with subject content. It has to be the subject teacher who teaches the lessons in English. New concepts are always difficult to accept. Is there a threat to the native language, if any? Do academic language and terminology develop? So uh, that's one thing that is important. Remember CALP, we want students to develop academic proficiency of the language, right, of, of subjects. We want them to use uh, talk about subjects, write about the subjects that they're learning in English, right? Called cognitive academic language proficiency. But how can we assess that? Do, do academic language terminology really develop? That's the question we have here. Insufficient understanding of content through the medium of a foreign language. We have to be careful with that because if we have one or more learners in a, in a classroom whose English is not enough to be able to understand content, then the, the, the content will be insufficiently understood. This is important to bear in mind. Clear methodology and assessment are not clear. Teachers have to be supported. Teacher overload, shortage of material. That also happens. When we think of CLIO, we think of any educational segment from pre-primary, primary, secondary, vocational colleges up to higher education. Uh, in our country, pre-primary is our educação infantil, primary, ensino fundamental 1, secondary is split into two segments, lower secondary is fundamental 2, upper secondary is ensino médio, Vocational colleges or vocational schools offer vocational courses and classes in, in many career fields, like, for example, healthcare, computer technology, office management, and so on. And higher education, we're talking about university level. And then 
when we think of materials for all these educational segments, there are possibilities according to the number of hours and the percentage of content we're going to teach in English. Remember the several different clue contexts, moving from soft clue to hard clue? So let's look at this textbook here. It's called Cambridge Primary Science, Stage 4. In this textbook, uh, we, we find uh, the content, the science content that a learner in fourth grade needs. But this textbook was not written to uh, at the context of English as a foreign language. It was written to English as a first language, to native speakers of English. So if I look at the content of science and the science teacher from the school says, yes, this is what we teach in fourth grade here in our school, you say the content is perfect, but my students may not be able to follow the English we used while this content is presented. So decisions will have to be made. For example, I want uh, to use the series primary, uh, Cambridge Primary Science, but in fourth grade, instead of stage four, I will adopt stage two. That's a possibility. The level of English will be simpler. However, the content that I will be teaching in English will be uh, of second grade, and not fourth grade. So all these must be taken into consideration. Here is an example of soft clue. Here we have an, an ELT course book called Guess What? Level 3 for primary and uh, for third graders. And you have a clue lesson at the end of every unit in the course book. Uh, and you may have clue lessons on science, geography, biology, art, etc. So we have here what we what is called soft clue or language led clue. Why language led clue? Because the topic of this lesson is graded according to the language syllabus of the course book. That's why we call it soft clue. Here is an exa another example of language-led or soft clue. Uh, the course book is to teach English to primary students in Brazil. It's called Superminds Level 1, so for first or second graders. And this lesson is a clue lesson that finishes the unit of each unit of uh, Superminds. So I have a clue lesson in the unit of the course book. Here is an example of material not uh, here is for primary for young learners young learners young learners now this time we're talking about uh young adult adult learners um unlock is an academic skills course which offers a comprehensive approach to critical thinking this approach supports learners by giving them the tools they will need to analyze information, generate ideas, formulate their own opinions, and express themselves effectively in speaking and written uh, tasks. If I look at this, the topic of this lesson it, uh, on customs and traditions, I see six activities. At the beginning, the activities involve understanding. Let's think of lots and hot. So understanding is lots. Then they move on to applying when they reach activity four and five. Now, at the end of the, the, the last activity of, on this page, which is six, involves analyze. Now we're talking about hot, higher order thinking skills. So we want students to not only master academic English, but also develop critical thinking. And uh, somebody said when I was uh, playing the video, I, I, I could see the chat box. And somebody asked, will the reference books be uh, presented at the end? Yes, here they are. I've taken information for this webinar from these references. The first one is Clue in Context, 
Practical Guidance for Educators. In this book, the authors discuss the theory behind CLIO and research evidence that supports best practices in CLIO programs in four different education contexts. What are the contexts that they cover in this book? Immersion type programs, international schools, schools with immigrant and indigenous language students, and foreign language classrooms. The other uh, book is Excellence in Bilingual Education, a guide for school principals. In this book, we find practical guide to support school principals in the implementation of bilingual education. The book also helps schools with an existing bilingual program to evaluate and improve their practice. So if the school already has a bilingual uh, program, the book helps evaluate this program and improve its practice. Uh, activities for very young learners covers a range of suggestions of activities organized in eight chapters, each one of them focusing on topics such as song, chants, and rhymes, or another chapter on story and storytelling. But the reason why I have included this book as a reference for this uh, webinar is, in fact, Chapter 7. Chapter 7 brings uh, 12 activities called thinking-based activities. And thinking-based activities are uh, cognitive skills practice, involve cognitive skills or thinking skills practice, and they can be included in any CLIO lesson. Uh, this book, CLIO Content and Language Integrated Learning, is mentioned all the time. These authors are mentioned all the time. It gives a comprehensive overview of CLIO, and the authors share their experience of CLIO in secondary schools, primary schools, and English language schools across Europe. CLIO Activities, a resource for subject and language teachers, contains a wide range of easily accessible activities that can be used in any order. Dedicated subject pages include annotated extracts from authentic school teaching materials demonstrating how language is used in particular school subjects, such as geography, science, maths, and ICT. TKT stands for Teaching Knowledge Test. TKT is a series of modular teaching qualifications which test teachers' knowledge in specific areas of English language teaching. One of the modules is on CLIO. The TKT course CLIO module, then, is a course book designed for teachers preparing for the test. When you look at the top uh, of your slides, you will see the ZAL webpage, www.dzal.com.br. All, all of these books are available on their site, okay? You can check prices and, and buy them online if you want to. Another reference I'd like to share with you is this Cambridge Online Teacher Development course, called CLIO Introduction to Theory and Practice. Uh, there are several Cambridge Online teacher development courses ranging from two hours to 20 hours. This one about CLIO is a 20 hour online course. You can find it uh, on Cambridge Assessment English website, www.cambridgeenglish.org go to Continuous Professional Development for Teachers. If you want to buy it, you need to use Google Chrome, and you will need also an international credit card. Well, reference was the last part of this presentation, and it's time to say thank you to you all for your attention, for your presence here, um, I'm sorry at the beginning, I did something wrong, and instead of being moving on with my slides, it, it, it was stuck in one slide, and I was imagining that you were 
uh, seeing the slides I was passing on, so I'm sorry about that. And well, well, thank you. Thank you all. If you are looking at the chat box, um, uh, thank you. You're very nice. Very nice. Um, we, we are, we have four minutes to go. So basically, one more time, Jessica, uh, Lyrica, Lyrica called me more than one sport thing to, to tell me your slides are not moving. <laughs> So, Lyrica, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, Dizal, thank you for inviting me for this webinar. And uh, just to remind you that right after this webinar at 5, there will be another webinar called It's Time for a Paradigm Shift. Let's talk about L1 Taboo with Deborah Bonifácio from Faculdade Cultura Inglesa. So, 5 o'clock. It will be streamed on Facebook, like, like mine right now, okay? It starts at 5, so don't forget that. Well, everybody, thank you very much for joining me until the end of this, uh, of this webinar, of this uh, session. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you next time. Giselle, one more time, thank you for inviting me, for being here. I'm very happy with this experience. Very happy. Thank you.